Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's time to meet our community, the Hispanic business community here in Orange County, powered by the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio, streaming live from our studio here at the University of California, Irvine's Beal Applied Innovation Center with the most innovative guy I know, John Gutierrez. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. Welcome to our community podcast show. Again, I'm your host, John Gutierrez, where our community is your community. I'm your senior vice president at the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And today we have a special guest. She's our new chair of our board at the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Her name is Silvia Pizarroso. She's the chair, of course, like I mentioned. And she's a commercial banker for J.P. Morgan, also known as Chase Bank. She's been there 35 years in the banking industry, and she's also enjoys volunteering for the leadership group uh, members. Everybody, welcome Silvia Pizarroso. Thank you for being here, Silvia. Thank you so much. I am so happy to be here. And before we get started, I would like to give a quick shout out to uh, un saludo caluroso a toda mi familia y amigos que me están escuchando en Bolivia y también aquí en los Estados Unidos. Uh, Gracias por escuchar. Wow, that is so nice. You know about Bolivia. So this is this is interesting. I, you know, Silvia, we'll get into the chamber. We'll get into all that good stuff. But one of the things we like to to ask people here first for all of our listeners is is of course we know you're a, a super leader in the community. Um, but share with us who Silvia is, where you grew up. Share with us your family, your hobbies, what you enjoy to do. So I was born in La Paz, Bolivia, and I immigrated to Orange County, uh, to the U.S., when I was 15, after the unfortunate passing of both my parents in a track accident. So I moved here to Orange County with uh, some family members and um, in Mission Viejo, to be more exact. And uh, after I graduated high school, I moved out and I been on my own ever since so um orange county has been my home and this is you know in my opinion the best place to be at and not only in the u.s uh, but i think in the world it's a beautiful area with beautiful people i hear about your parents that's that must have been a tragedy at such a young age right it was uh, but i think everything happens for a reason you know i my life uh, has turned out wonderful in spite of all of that you feel that it's made you stronger? Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm a self-made person. I've been on my own since I was 18, and that's one of the reasons that I like to volunteer and help out, especially uh, young adults, because I see myself in them. Some of them don't have, uh, you know, adults that they can help out with certain things, and I like to be one of them. You know, I like to mentor, as you know, in the youth chamber and other organizations, and uh, one of the reasons why I do that is because I see myself in them. I was, you know, a young Latina out there on my own, and I was fortunate that I had great mentors that saw something in me that I didn't even see, and they essentially showed me the way and said, Sylvia, this is your path, and they showed me a path that I didn't know I had. So that's one of the reasons, like, that I want to give back to the community, especially to the young adults because I was one of them, you know, did you, 35 years ago. You had good mentors growing up, you say? I did. Uh, again, uh, some people that saw something in me that I didn't even see it, and to this day, they're great friends. Um, That's good. They gave me some direction that I did not have from my parents because they were not here or family, so very grateful for all those people that were in my life. That's great. So as you were growing up, you, you said Mission, Mission Viejo? Yes. What was that like for you? Where, where did, you know, high school, where did you go? Or what, what, Tell us a little bit about that. Who is Silvia is growing up in Mission Viejo? It was a little difficult because obviously I did not know the language. I was still learning. I graduated from Capistrano Valley High School. Capo Valley. Capo Valley. Great football school when I was growing up. Yeah. There were some great uh, some players that actually went to the I think NFL. Todd, Todd Marinovich yes. went to Capo Valley. Great quarterback. Right, Paul? 
our producer knows what I'm talking about. Great he, quarterback. He did. He was yes. actually a year younger than me, so we had some classes together. Nader yes. went on to USC. Yes. And then went to the NFL. I think played for the Raiders. So great football school. Yeah. I do yes. remember him, yes. Yeah. So what was Capitol Valley like? Uh, it was a great school, you know, but I was a little shy at the time because I was still trying to find my way here. It was a very, you know, I had a, it was a huge culture shock, you yes. know, moving from Bolivia to Mission Viejo where um, there was only a handful of Latinos in the high school. So it was challenging, but I found my way there. Um, what did you, know, you enjoy had, to do while you were in high school? What were some of the things you enjoyed? <laughs> Not a whole lot, you know. My family, my <laughs> my 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 tios were very conservative, so okay. couldn't really go who, out. Much. That was who was raising you, yes. the tios. Okay. Yeah, so I couldn't really, you know, go out and do much. Um, so I did a lot of studying. So we're very very conservative. Reading, <laughs> lots of reading. Yes, Enjoyed lots reading. of reading. Yes, okay. yes. But you know, found my way. So and so from high school, where did you transition next in your journey in life growing up? I moved out um, after graduating high school mm-hmm. and uh, moved in with my brother, who's six years older than me, for about a year and a half. We moved to Santa Ana. I moved with my brother. My hometown, you, Santa Ana. Exactly, right. exactly. I lived there for about a year and a half. And okay. then uh, I was working at the mall and in Salcos Plaza, and I met there one of my first mentors. It was a lady who worked for a finance company. And she recruited me, and that's how my, I found myself in finance, and that was my introduction to banking. Okay. Uh, I was 19 years old, and um, I haven't left the field ever since. Uh, it's, it's been a great journey, great career. Um, I knew enough at the time to go to school. You know, I mean, I wanted to get an education, so I signed up to go to junior college. It took me forever. Here locally? Um, locally, yeah. I went to Orange Coast College for a couple of years. Exactly. Yes. And then, uh, obviously, I had to work full time and support myself. And so I ended up going to school at night. Eventually graduated from the University of Phoenix. Wow. Uh, back in the day when they, uh, before they had online classes. (laughs) Yes, yes. Um, But yeah, it's a... But that was tough, right? Because you're like working probably, going to school, right? You said nighttime school. That's... That's not easy. You make it seem very like, oh, I just did this. No, it's it's. I'm pretty sure it was a lot of hard work and struggle and studying, and you were very dedicated from what it seems. It was, um, but looking back, uh, one of the things that I've always done is get up every morning and just look forward and keep going. And looking back at my journey, I realized that, you know, I've accomplished many things, uh, but during the time I was going through it, I didn't really think stop to think about it i just kept going that's awesome um maybe it's a survival instinct i'm not sure but i'm very grateful for the journey and i feel that i'm very blessed for everything that this country and this life has you know provided to me and now you have a daughter right i have a daughter she's 27 years old and a son who's 24 okay and uh, yeah, they're in my life. I don't you know. think I've ever met your son, but I met your daughter. I think yes. uh, Villa Roma, or sometime when we were out there, right during the the paellas with Leon Teresa there. I think I met your daughter, and, and it was just very just beautiful person. So I don't think I've ever met your son. But uh, tell us a little bit about them. I mean, what, what's that like being a parent? What, what do they enjoy? Well, uh, as I mentioned, my daughter's twenty seven, and she is um, my mini me. <laughs> I call her my muñequita. She is definitely. Is Sylvia at that age? Uh, she's a go-getter. She's out there, Miss Social Butterfly, and That's good. Okay. she works for a finance company herself, and she's doing really well. Good uh, for her. Very independent. Good for her. Uh, my son uh, Luke is 24, and he still lives at home with us. He graduated from um, Cal State Fullerton three years okay. ago. Nice. And uh, right now, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, where his next steps will be. In we were life. all there once. Yes. We were all there once, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Wow. And share with us a little bit about, um, you know, some of the things that you and your husband, right, enjoy to do, uh, if you don't mind. Absolutely. So uh, my husband and I have been um, together for about 17 years, and he's a wonderful person, my biggest cheerleader. Good guy. Uh, number, Good guy. Number Real nice one guy. fan. I, I mean, met he's, him, yes. he's, um, he supports all my endeavors and uh Loves to golf, and I'm learning, uh, so I try to join him. And Great business sport, right, for those listening? Yes, it is. Uh, so I'm trying to learn so that I can do a little more business out in the golf course. 
And, um, yeah, so I join him on a lot of his, the golf outings that he is involved in and yes. just, you know, join him. And we just try to enjoy life at the moment. You know, we're empty nesters, really. So just trying to figure out, you know, what's next for us. So it's been wonderful. So for people listening, a lot of the women listening out there are men that want to go into an industry like yours. What does Silvia do at Chase Bank? What is that like? What What is it that you do? What do you enjoy? Um, Because everybody thinks of banking, very just numbers. Share with them a little bit about that. So my role at uh, Chase Bank is uh, as a commercial commercial banker, I help businesses with all of their banking needs. Mm -hmm. So anything you can think of as it relates to banking from their checking accounts to lending. So we provide them with equipment financing, lines of credits, commercial real estate financing. So anything related to the business. In that role, I find myself being a trusted advisor to my clients. Uh, I love my job. I love dealing with entrepreneurs. They are the biggest gamblers I know because they get up every day, day in and day out, and put everything out on the line, you know? So I truly enjoy working with them, especially uh, some of the businesses that are starting up and growing because um, they're part of that journey, right? Yes. I still have some clients that I met, you know, 20, 30 years ago that I'm still in contact with them. You know, I met them back in the day when they were small, helping them out in their journey, and now they're a large business, and it's amazing being a part of that circle of trust. They invite you to their kids' quinceañeras or weddings or life events for them, and being a part of that, it feels amazing when you help them out. And because many times they don't get the best advice out there. Yes. And that's another reason why I got really involved with volunteering and with the chamber. I wanted to help them out to make sure that they're getting the right advice and connect them with the resources that are out there. You know, the the resources are there, but sometimes the information and the education is not there. So it's uh, been a very rewarding career. Um, Love working with my clients. You mentioned our chamber. How did you end up at our Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce? Who who did you know? Who did you meet? Who connected you? So being a banker, you know, they you got to bring business. So they ask you to go and network and do join different groups. And, and that's what I've done over my career. I've always been involved in different groups and networking. And uh, I found myself being a member of a chamber probably about eight years ago mm-hmm. because of my role at the bank. I need, needed to go out there and network with businesses so that I can try to round up some new accounts and all that. And... Um, when I got there, uh, I think there was a couple other people from the bank that were involved. In That's great. Ruben and I, actually, Ruben is the you know C- CEO of Our the president, chamber, yes. the president, CEO. We worked together at Citibank okay. 20 some years ago. So when I ran into him there, it was like, oh, what are you There's doing here? There's a connection here? there. Yes, right? absolutely. Yes. And um, I found myself getting more and more involved because I wanted to help. And uh, here we are. Yes, and you eventually became a board member. Yes, I did. So I asked Ruben, you know, after being a member for a few years, you know, I would like to be even more involved and I would like to help. You know, what do you guys need? And he said, well, we will be happy to be have you on the board. And, of course, you know, they need to vote and all that. But yes. uh, essentially I raised my hand and I said, I, I want to help more. Yes, that's great. You know, there's some things you've mentioned in your journey uh, such as mentorship and mentors you had. We've talked about this with several guests have been here. Everybody's had a mentor. And I know you shared that earlier, how that is dear to your heart, right? And how you're involved with our youth chamber, right? Share a little bit about that with the people listening, how you're involved and what do you enjoy doing as far as the youth chamber? The youth chamber, as you know, most of them are first generation college students. I see myself in them. Okay. You know, yes. they, um, they remind uh, you of you in that journey. Absolutely. Right? You know, I didn't have anybody to turn to, nobody, you know. So I want to give them the information they need to have and connect them to resources. Because back in the day when I was young, even though I had mentors, we did not have the resources that they have today. 
you know, there's so many resources for them these days. At the time, the fact that I, somebody saw something in me that I didn't see myself, so that was a great help. Now, I want to make sure that they understand that they, their journey it's just starting. Sometimes they feel a little frustrated because they... All know, the challenges they face. Quite a few challenges. You know, you sometimes they want to quit. They have challenges at home. Mm-hmm. And just to show them and tell them, I was there. I didn't have any resources. Very little help. But look where I am today with, you know, some hard work and education. Education. This is what I've been able to accomplish. You just need to give yourself some time and go through that journey. Yet sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it's not easy. Well, you of all people, Sylvia, I mean, when you think of your journey, uh, you know, as you know, I, I'm in healthcare and in and, and hospice, and when somebody loses a loved one, right, we always compare that to, you know, like a ma- major earthquake and you have to rebuild, right? Everything's falling apart. To lose your parents at such a young age and then move to another country, right? And now be with your uncles. I mean, you want to talk about perseverance. I mean, that is, how did you do it? That's, I mean, that's amazing. Again, it's just, uh, I never thought about it. I just got up every morning and I just kept going forward. So, uh, and looking back, you know, again, it's been a great journey. Yeah. And that's what I like to share with all my mentees. I mean, I mentor um, several college students. And what a great story to tell them. Yeah, you know, anything is possible. And another thing that I want to make sure they understand is that they see themselves, that the possibilities are endless. They could literally be anything they want. You know, I didn't have anybody that looked like me back in the day as an executive at a bank or anything like that. I want them to see that Hmm. and realize that anything is possible and always be proud of their background and never be embarrassed where you come from. I mean, we've had many conversations with some of my mentees about that. Be proud of where you come from. Yes, I noticed at the beginning when you mentioned Bolivia, you know, it was like this smile, right? This, you know, what's Bolivia like? I've never been there for the listeners. Share a little bit about that. Bolivia is a beautiful country in South America. Okay. You know, it's, uh, there's, the, the country is divided between the Andes and the Amazons. Uh, again, beautiful, beautiful country. Um, I visit there every three years. I still have quite a few Great place friends. to vacation. There are beautiful areas to vacation, okay. uh, to, to visit. Uh, one of them is being the Salar de Uyuni, the Salt Flats. Okay. It's uh, amazing. It's beautiful. you got to look it up. Okay. Um, check it out. And there's quite a few other areas where you can go and visit. Um, yeah, again, it's beautiful country. Anybody wishes to visit Bolivia, contact Silvia. She's your new tour guide. Yes. <laughs> Please do. (laughs) So we don't have a lot of time. Obviously, they're giving me the five minutes. What would you like to share with our listeners about, you know, just the Orange County Hispanic Chamber? I know you've shared a lot about the Youth Chamber. We're excited to have you as a new chair. By the way, congratulations. You Uh, you gave a great speech at Estrella Awards. What do you want to share with people listening about our chamber? Well, the chamber has been around a long time. And we've done wonderful things uh, for the business community over the last three decades. But it's time to revamp it. You know, we had two years of COVID and... Uh, Tough years. Like, yeah, yeah. Man, like many organizations, uh, they're trying to figure out how to emerge from COVID because, you you know, life as we know it has changed. Yes. So we're doing the same thing. We're going to... Um, we're revamping the chamber. We're going to have new programs uh, and new opportunities to do... Uh, new things for the business community taking it to another level absolutely i'm I'm super excited we're actually having a meeting later today a planning meeting uh there's quite a few things we'll be discussing i'm just excited about the possibilities Uh, the biggest thing is uh, just making sure that people know that we're out there and that we have so many resources you know that's the biggest uh, challenge sometimes is people don't have um, the knowledge or the information so if you are a small business owner living here in Orange County or in the surrounding areas if you need any help please give us a call or email us we have many resources to help you even if you're starting up or if you need to grow your business all these services and resources are free and we have we're here to help you uh, 
So give us a call if you need anything. Silvia, it's been a pleasure having you on our show. We wish you all the best as a new chairwoman of our board. Um, please, folks, reach out to the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, like Sylvia mentioned. You can go to our social media at OCHCC.org. You could also go to our Instagram, uh, OCHCC. You can Google that. Um, you'll see a lot of our events. And speaking of events, as everyone knows from our chamber, we have our June 9th Angels Game Mixer, which is a great event, right, Sylvia? Uh, we partner with the Hispanic Bar Association, um, and it's at the Angels Game. You get to part, you know participate in this mixer, network, and enjoy the game. And then we have our golf tournament, which is our, our charity fundraiser for our scholarship program for our youth chamber that Sylvia mentioned earlier, and that's August 30th. So if you want to get involved in any of those events, please reach out to us. Silvia, muchas gracias for being here. Shout out to all the Bolivians, your family. Uh, we're excited to have you. Folks, that is all today, and uh, we want to thank Silvia for being our guest. Thank you for having me. Well, there you have it. Another great member of our community. I invite you to come back and meet more each and every week on Our Community Podcast. Powered by the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio, streaming live from our studios here at the University of California, Irvine's Beale Applied Innovation Center.